Judges chapter 6, if you'd turn there please. Story of the life of Gideon. And um, this is something God laid on my heart last week. And uh, I'm going to probably do more teaching than preaching today. And uh, you pray for me. I'm, I'm just, as I'm sitting here thinking about what I'm going to say, I'm just going, I have, I have nothing. I mean, I've got notes and scriptures, and I'm going to let the scriptures do the talking today. So you pray for me, I'll pray for you, and we'll ask God to bless us this morning. Gideon's trumpet. I want you to think about that and think about what it means. Judges chapter 6, verse 33. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together. Do you remember what I said about this last week? Look at here. Sandy's got notes. Count them. Midianites. Amalekites. Children of the east. Gathered together. Okay? I want you to think about it. They're gathered together, and they're gathered against you. So we have three things. We have the Bible talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Does that ring a bell? Okay? These three things are gathered together, and they are against you. And you have no power against it. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask something, okay? I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to volunteer yourself, okay? This week, this week, if these three things have been gathered against you this week, would you raise your hand? I will. Thank you for God's people being open and honest. This is the house of the Lord. This is the place. This is like a sinner's anonymous group. Only we're not that anonymous. We're open and we need to be open about who we are and what we've dealt with and what we have absolutely no power against. Can I hear God's people say amen? So they gathered together and they went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. Now, Jezreel, you got to understand, does not belong to the Midianites. It does not belong to the Amalekites. And it does not belong to the children of the east. They're in a place where they have trespassed. They have got into your home, your life, your mind, and they do not belong there. Turn to uh, 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17. I'm going to show you another illustration of this. First Samuel 17 is about Goliath. And I want you to look in verse 1, 1 Samuel 17. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko. And the Bible says, which belongeth to Judah. They were in a place that did not belong to them. And these things... Listen to your preacher this morning. They do not belong in your life. Lust of the flesh does not belong there. Lust of the eyes does not belong in your house. It does not belong in your mind. It does not belong in your eyes. Pride of life. Trespassing in a place where it does not belong. But that's where they're going to move in. Can I hear God's people say amen? Verse 34, but the Spirit of the Lord, look at that phrase, the Spirit of the Lord, came upon Gideon. Look at him. He's looking at these enemies, he's looking at these armies coming against him. Does he look afraid to you? Does he look like he's afraid? Does he look like he's in fear? Absolutely not. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet. What is the trumpet? It's your Bible. It's the Word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord and the Word of the Lord are the same. He blew a trumpet and Abiezer was gathered after him and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh who was also gathered after him and he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulon and unto Naphtali and they came up 
to meet him. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Who have you sent messages out to? It's a good question. That's good. It's not bad. Does the guy wearing the same shirt next to you agree with that? Absolutely. He's smart. That's a smart man. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Who have you sent messages out to? This is a message world, is it not? I've been getting messages all week. Okay? Well wishes, people praying. I appreciate it. Emails, text messages. Okay? I've been getting them. I appreciate it. I love it. God's people reaching out to other people, sending messages out. But I want you to notice what he's doing here. He's gathering the people together. What are we doing here today? This family came down from Wisconsin. That's your neighbors, Pam. I saw you talking to them. They came, they came here today to gather with us here today. Because that means something. Okay? We need to be here. And we need each other to be gathered together with us. Have you tried doing it alone? Have you tried living for the Lord alone by yourself? Stinks, doesn't it? It doesn't work. You've got people saying, Oh, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I just don't go to church anywhere. That is a drifting ship with no anchor. Amen? It's a drifting ship with no anchor. But he gathered them together, and these people are not afraid. Because the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet. I want you to take your Bible and turn to Isaiah 11. What you'll see... Well, you pray for me. What you'll see is this is the Spirit of God. In, in Revelation chapter 4, John got to see the throne of God. And he saw seven golden candlesticks. And he said, they are the seven spirits of God. Every time you take a breath, you've got the seven spirits going into you, giving you life. We need life. Amen. Isaiah 11 verse 1. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord. See, it's the exact phrase. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Think about when Jesus was baptized and he came up out of the water. What happened? The spirit of the Lord came down like a dove and did what? It rested on him, just like the Bible said. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when we have the Spirit of the Lord, we also have the Word of the Lord. The two are the same. My question to you is, how much... Of the Spirit of the Lord has rested upon you this week. You said that you had the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life gathered against you. Have you been afraid? You should. You should. But how much of the Spirit of the Lord... Has rested on you. How much of the word of the Lord have you been in? So I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Because I'm not sure that I would want to. How much Bible have you read this week? How, much, how many times do you open up the Bible? You have an app on your phone, do you not? With a Bible on it? How much? How much? 
how can we expect this church to give out the word of the Lord if we haven't taken in the word of the Lord? Can't do it. We can only give, when, when David said, my cup overfloweth, we can only give out of the overflow that God has put in us throughout the week. We've got friends. We've got co-workers. We've got gas station attendants. We've got grocery store people. We've got people that we know that are dying and going to hell because the enemies are gathered against them. And they have not been sent a message that Gideon has the Spirit of the Lord on him and he blew a trumpet. We've sent them every message in the world. We've talked about the weather. We've talked about our friends. We've talked about people we don't like. We've talked about everything under the sun with people all week long. We've not been gathering together and we've not been sharing the word of the Lord. Can I hear God's people say amen? See, I see you nodding your head, so... And I have to tell you, I'm probably about as guilty as everybody else. I've been stuck in a hospital all week. I have not read near as much as I normally would or do. Haven't done it. That's probably why I'm so tired this morning. Amen? So... tell you what I want us to do. Let me read the rest of this. I'm going to try to follow the Lord. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And I want you to notice what these seven spirits do to the man whom this rests on and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. This is a promise to you that God will make you of understanding of the fear of the Lord. When you do wrong, do you have the fear of the Lord on you when you do it? Who remembers being a teenager... And doing something mom and daddy told you not to do. I don't raise your hand. I don't want, I don't want to, because I know some of you. <laughs> and you know me. And you were afraid that mom and daddy would find out. Am I right? Am I right, son? And did mom and daddy find out? Okay. Here's what the Bible will do for you. It'll make you of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. When you read your Bible, you will have the Spirit of the Lord resting upon you, and you will understand that what you've done is wrong. And God's not happy with it. And God will chasten you because he loves you and he will teach you the fear of the Lord. Amen. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. I want you to think about that. Bonnie, we love you. We understand. Okay. I want, I want to hook the train for a minute. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I had a thought about some of our folks that come and sit in these pews. I know of a church that on the back 
They have real nice, very comfortable chairs for folks to sit in. Could we do something like that? That be all right? Okay. We'll pray about that and we'll we'll look into it. Yes, sir. In, it is, but here's what I'm going to say. What's happened is the Spirit of the Lord came upon you. He, what he's saying was he's been waking up and just... Yeah. Have, you have to read it. I want you to feel guilty, but I also want you to know that when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you can't help it. You cannot help it. You'll read, you'll study, you'll memorize, you'll cry, you'll get doodads up and down your back. Yeah, and you'll, you'll shout, okay? But I want you to think about this now. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Amen? We're living in a very wicked world. And the people that we see... I sat in front of a guy this week whose mouth was so vile about I wanted to rip his teeth out, cut his tongue off, shove it up his nose. When I turned around and looked at the guy, he was tatted from his fingernails all the way up to his skull, boasting about how he was going to quit his job and become a rap star. And I'm just going... Okay. And I looked at that wretched soul and I said, you pitiful wretch, you. And Christ died for him. Christ died for him. And his problem is that he needs Jesus. And I judge after the sight of my eyes. And when my heart gets right, I don't. I see people the way we need to see them. Black, white, red, pale, doesn't matter who they are, they need Jesus. Can I hear God's people say amen? He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Jared, that's what I did. I did not like that guy. I wanted to get up. I wanted to shake it. I turned around and looked at him, and I'm going, that's exactly who I thought was sitting behind me. And I wanted to reprove after the hearing of my ears. But with righteousness, with righteousness, shall he judge who? The poor. Let me tell you something. God did not like Jesus did not like rich people you read that in your Bible he did not like rich people his gospel his salvation was for people who couldn't buy it not for those who thought they could amen so when we minister in Kenya, I'm telling you, those are poor people. And they have nothing. And they're watching us right now ministering the gospel to them. It's not a boast, but that's what happens when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon a church, they don't mind ministering to poor people. Instead of pandering and catering to the rich because they'll bring money into the coffers. That ain't right. Righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with what? Read that in your Bible. What's he going to smite it with? The rod of his what? 
His mouth. What is it that's coming out of his mouth? What comes out of the mouth of Jesus? This Bible. The word of the Lord. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. I like this. The breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Take your Bible, turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2. Look at this. Look at verse 8. Are you there? I'm not going to put it on the screen for you because I don't have it. 2 Thessalonians, that's what I like to hear. Turn them pages. 2 Thessalonians 2. Look at verse 8. Then shall that wicked, capital W, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume. I like it. Who sh the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's not Benny Hinn going <sighs> on people. And them falling backwards. I would too if the man breathed on me. Amen. The spirit of his mouth is this Bible that you're holding in your hand and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, you raised your hand today. You said, I've been wicked this week. You said it. I've been wicked this week. In my mind, in my eyes, in my heart, in my body, I have been wicked this week. That can be destroyed. It can be destroyed. God can take it away. God can forgive it. God can heal it. God can make it right with when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you. When the Word of God is opened to you. It'll make it right. Amen? I'm done preaching. You're going to get the head of the line at whatever restaurant you're headed to. Okay? But I want us to pray. I want us to pray, number one, forgiveness. Which is confession, repentance, forgiveness. Number two, that you'll open that Bible up this week. Either in the book, on your phone, on your computer, however you do it, open it up and read it. And let God put doodads up and down your back. Let God bring tears into your eyes. And let God bring shouting to your lips. And let God, with the rod of His mouth, destroy the wicked. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen. Those are God's people still. And they need the righteousness of Christ in them. Okay? So, well, I appreciate that. Let's come in and pray. Y'all pray for me.